Do you have the ability to accept and manage feelings through challenge and change? Are you emotionally healthy and can allow your emotions to be digestible? Or do you find you constantly keep yourself busy, creating a distraction to avoid dealing with the loss of a loved one or putting off the anxiety and making a life-changing decision? Do you intellectualize your feelings, telling yourself you're fine and convincing yourself it's not a big deal? Perhaps you feel bad for feeling bad or your self-talk can be harsh and negative. If any of this resonates, then today's episode is for you. Welcome Soul Tribe to Series 3 and what a set of great topics we've got planned for you. But this episode is so exciting and I have a very special guest. We're exploring the topic of emotional health and healing, a topic I feel that doesn't get enough coverage in the world today, especially when well-being is the top priority for us all. So it's with great pleasure to have with us such a beautiful and inspirational guest, Jack Rhodes. He's also known as the Epiphany Coach and he shares his thoughts and wisdoms with us today. Jack is also known as the Epiphany Coach, as I've mentioned, and he helps his clients with epiphany moments through coaching and Reiki. He focuses on mindset, confidence, emotions, and goals. He uses a wealth of skills in life coaching qualifications like NLP, hypnosis, and he has a first-class degree in business studies and is also studying a master's in positive psychology and well-being. So with that said, Welcome, Jack. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you and your time. Wow, that's some introduction. That stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, mate? <laughs> I don't know. You've read that was great. Thank you. And boss, yeah, I've had a fantastic day. Have you been? Um, just a quick question before we get started. Have you ever had any like broadcasting experience or anything similar? No. Oh, that's like that's next level presentation skills there from that introduction even when i've listened to some of the podcasts i was like i wonder if she's ever like done radio or anything similar so first of all well done on that and (laughs) big big well done on the success of the podcast so far like amazing thank you so much and you've also got a podcast what's that called can you remind me yeah the minerva podcast me and me me and one of my best mates jay we just show off all cool people in Liverpool really and and beyond just doing amazing things whether it's independent businesses charities people with online presence just organizations everything it's it's great and we're gonna have you on after this I was about to say I'm I'm in line I, and I want to come down to Liverpool because you know I come up to Liverpool shall I say because you know I'm a red supporter so um I love I love Liverpool town I just love the vibe there it's so cool you never have to go for a night out with Beth Oh my gosh, yes, and Beth, <laughs> we Beth. have to shout you out, Beth, because it, if it wasn't for you, this we wouldn't be out. here today. <laughs> so Beth, we're, uh, when, we're, when I'm coming up to Liverpool, um, you're, you're going to have to be ready for me. Yeah, we all get a bevy. <laughs> <laughs> so emotional health and healing, Jack, I mean, the, for yeah. me, I think this is a, a major topic, I mean, personally, but also for people I know and just for humanity, for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it is absolutely because we all feel emotions. We're human beings. Like that's that is it's a part of our nature to feel emotions. And I read a book ages ago. Don't I can't give you the full Harvard reference, like apologies about this. <laughs> but if any viewer or listener wants to know, then drop me a message and I will find the source. But you know, Dake, Rene Descartes, like the philosopher, he said, I think therefore I am. That was like his final line, like, wow, stuck out in the ages. I think therefore I am. That's what makes you that's how you know you're a living thing. I think, therefore, I am. And then I read in this book, I can't, I'll forget about it because I've wrecked my brain. But this <laughs> author said, Descartes had it wrong. This was like the first chapter or something. Descartes had it wrong. I think, therefore, I am. All animals think, but not all animals feel on the level that humans do. The, the statement should be, I feel, therefore, I am. Because we have the ability to not only feel emotions, but to due to the consciousness we have and due to the our ability to th- think about what an emotion means, that's where emotional health comes in. Because uh, most animals live in emotion, like the anxiety, the adrenaline, the fear, that'll keep most animals alive. Human beings being animals, yes, we feel all these emotions, but it's then the ability to be able to think about the emotion afterwards, which is where emotional health comes into it. So... The thinking isn't the tough part. The feeling isn't the, the challenging part. It's the mixture of thinking about what you're feeling or thinking about what you're thinking about what you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Wow, that what a way sense. to introduce the actual topic. That's a really good way to break it down. 
Yeah, it's um, because everyone, like anxiety, say I have a client with anxiety or feeling anxiety or living in anxiety, which is the challenge. It's, we need anxiety to, to live. It keeps you alive. It prevents you from going down a road you think's a bit shifty or yeah, when you feel anxious about a situation or a person, it's there to tell you something. It's an emotional response. Yeah, it's a sensor, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like giving you that receptor in your in your body, in your, in your stress receptor, whatever you want to call it, exactly. to say something's not quite right. It's either the situation you're in yeah. or what you're doing or who you're you know interacting with, but you're not feeling right about this, so you need to pay attention. Exactly. And it's that ability to be able to process the emotion. And if you can, it's the processing of the emotion. The emotion will flow. The emotion will pass. But if you don't, um, if you're thinking about an emotion and you get, you end up living in the emotion, like living in fear or living in anxiety, it's in that fight or flight motion, in that fight or flight part of life. If you live in that part of life, that's the challenge. That's the issue. But yeah. feeling anxiety is fine. Everyone feels anxiety. Feeling stress, that can cause you to put you under pressure to do your work and get, do, put, do the best possible work you need to do. All emotions are valid on some level. It's, it, it's when we live in the negative emotions that's where the challenges come in yeah and it's when we let the emotions become us Mm. i think i've seen a a really great visual the other day where it's like this cartoon man i'll have to send it to you but he literally there's like a hole in his stomach or in his body in his midsection and the emotions are flying through and it's almost going you know don't become the emotions but be able to understand them see them for what they are you know, address them in the moment, but they, they're passing through. Exactly. They're not here to stay. They're here to tell you something and then move on. And they're not here to define you. It, literally. And it's that identity of an emotion. If you detach from the emotion and don't identify with it, for example, let's use, what's an emotion, stuff that people don't tend to want to feel, but they do? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I think people show anger more. I think, do you know what? <laughs> like, love. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Because like. it's easy to say, I love you, but really, when to really express the emotion of love, the true feeling of love, I think sometimes people struggle to really show it because they're scared. Their ego's like, oh no, because if you say that to him or you say that to her, you know, what if she doesn't love you back? So you, you're almost protecting you. Do you know Do you know where I'm going with that one? Yes, of course, yeah, absolutely. Because let's say love then, yeah? Love as a, yeah, okay, let's go with love. So I like the twist we're putting on here, a positive, a positive spin. So when you're feeling love, if you, feeling the emotion is valid and you say you fall in love with someone, perfect. But if you act on this emotion, love, love is a powerful, powerful drug. So it can blind you from the reality. You might fall in love with someone who's not a particularly nice person and they might be manipulating you because they know they can use love or it might be a family member who doesn't have your best interest at heart but you think they love you so acting on the emotion can be blinding and being able to feel the emotion but then process that with the mind as we touched there touched on earlier feel your emotions but then process okay maybe let's say you've just fell in love with someone after a week and they're asking to move in which alarm, <laughs> alarm bell should be ringing I'd say I'd say red flags, but I had a client recently say to me like they were dating someone. And she's like, "Yeah, there's just been a few burgundy flags." And I was like, "Burgundy, burgundy, like, yeah, not even yeah. red." She was like, "Not even red." Like they were dark, dark red flags. I had to get out, and I was like, "Okay, at least you recognize these burgundy flags." So, yeah, or pink flags as well. I've heard someone call them like where they're not they're not that red. They're not alarm bells, but the little subtle ones that you should look out for. But that's that's a good way of looking at it so if you say you fall in love or you you feel in love become aware that emotion is just energy in motion so emo- all emotions will pass so let's say you're angry or let's say you're anxious or you're worried or you're scared that that emotion not identifying with that emotion and affirming to yourself i am feeling the emotion of x y and z so let's say love or let's say anxiety or fear if we if we identify as You've noticed where you feel the emotion first of all, bring your awareness to it on the physical level. And then if yeah. it's let's say anxiety, I am feeling the emotion of anxiety. That will pass because all emotions come to pass. The, the fundamental law of nature and an emotion is part of nature. 
the fundamental law of nature is everything is impermanent. This life we're living in, any situation you're in, all emotions, everything is impermanent. So if you dissociate from the emotion and rather than identifying I am anxious or I am scared or I am in love or I am whatever emotion it is, if you dissociate from that and don't identify with it, it will pass easier if you just, it will flow through you. Like that picture you said where the emotion's flowing through. Yeah, yeah, I like I, that. I am feeling the emotion of anxiety. And even myself, whenever I've felt that, I'm feeling the emotion of stress or I'm feeling the emotion of, yeah, I'm feeling the emotion of stress when I've got a lot of work to do. Eventually, mm. that that's not, that doesn't tend to be that often because I used to get very stressed. So that's kind of me. Priority in life is not being stressed. <laughs> but if anything ever creeps up, it's okay, I'm feeling this emotion and that's okay. That is perfectly natural to feel these emotions. We are human beings. We feel emotions. Recognize, allow, and it will pass. This too shall pass the fundamental law of nature, the fundamental law of everything. And I I love the way that you've articulated it. It's um, really well said. And I want to throw something in here, right? Yeah. The emotion of fear, because of what's going on in the world today and what, what we've been experiencing for the last, over the last year. Mm-hmm. I feel that I feel that fear has definitely played a major role in the way that people are feeling. And I feel that they're not identifying with the fact that it's a feeling and they've just become a person that is in fear. And it's Living. more of a fixed, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like a fixed entity now of who they are. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's touching back on what we spoke about earlier living in the, that part of the emotion, the fight or flight, or living in the emotion rather than dipping in and out and it keeps you alive. Sometimes you feel it, it'll pass. It's living in that fear, which has been heightened massively because the whole world has been shook up, of course. Yeah. And everyone, I, mean, I, I presume everyone on some level throughout this whole thing that's been going on for the past, however long it's been going on, <laughs> is, is kind of has felt fear on some level because this had this thing hasn't affected there's not been one person who hasn't been affected in some way whether that's direct or indirect it has to have affected someone in some way therefore yes. a little bit of fear because of how strange it is and it's the first time everyone has seen this that will have well for the first time everyone not the first ever pandemic but the first time everyone alive now has seen something like this yeah so that will have affected on some level like what is actually going on so mm-hmm. then fear i mean especially with the news the media social media as well yeah yeah. But living in fear is living in fear will cut your life short scientifically. But if you the opposite of fear is love. So if you choose to step into love, choose to live in a place of love, loving those loving yourself, which a lot of people had to do on some level when they were locked up, basically. <laughs> for yeah. our we were locked up. It was we were with ourselves. And it may not have been, and if it's not someone you did particularly love or you wasn't particularly happy with, there was a lot of emotions and stuff that a lot of people had to process. Yeah, but absolutely. I've seen a lot of people personally and professionally come out of the lockdown better on the other side as a as an individual because emotions have been processed. Maybe traumas have been processed or certain kind of beliefs and viewpoints and ways of living have changed and adapted because there was a lot of introspection, which shows the power of sitting with your emotions yeah I oh yeah absolutely that I I think a lot of people with the the, with the busyness of the way life is Mm -hmm. you kind of get so accustomed to just keep moving keep going keep going it's like a rat race and one of the positives that came out of it was that it stopped yeah and you had to just look in the mirror you know be with yourself like you said and then feel those emotions and Mm -hmm. You know, no emotions are bad emotion because no, telling no. you about yourself, it's helping you to grow, release yes. maybe what you need to release because you're you're hoarding an emotion that doesn't need to be with you. It was from the past, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I wanna I wanna ask you, I wanna pick your brains, right? Because yep. this is what when I when we were planning this episode, I said no, we've we've got to touch on this. Like, what would you say is the key difference between like emotional health? And then mental health, because mental health is a very big topic. And I'm glad to see that in recent years, it's been more embraced and being brought to the forefront, you know, saying, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed about, right? We, we need to yeah. support each other um, in our mental health and making sure, 
you know, our communities are, um, you know, doing what they can to help one another. But mm-hmm. where where do you toe the line? What's the real like distinguishment between mental health and emotional health? There's no different. It's like the mind, the mind body. We'll come on to mental health and emotion in a moment, but it's similar to the mind body. So like the mind and the body aren't separate. If you eat crap, you will feel crap. And then if you feel crap, you're more drawn to eating crap. Does that make sense? But when yeah. you eat old, nutritious, high vibrational food, plant-based or not, as long as it's healthy and nutritious, you do feel amazing. You know the difference when you've had an amazing meal compared to some garbage out at a pizza shop. You, yeah. not, denying, not denying it's nice, but you can physically, if you tune into your stomach, you're like, oh, I feel like utter. I won't swear, but yeah, <laughs> it's all right. But I feel like utter <laughs> garbage. So there's n- there is no r- same way when you exercise, it improves your mind. Yeah. And you, you your mind can get you out of a bad situation to get you to go and exercise. They're both interlinked. And the same with mental health and emotional health. So a lot of your emotions are, are created in your gut. And now science even backs up what people have been saying for centuries, for thousands of years, that you have different minds. You have a, a mind in your brain, you have a mind in your heart and a gut mind. And science now backs up that your emotions, I think mo- I think it's like 85% of your serotonin is created in your stomach. So wow. even, though, even though it's your brain that triggers it, it comes from your stomach. So gut health is massive for your emotions. Your gut health is so important, which due to the nature of diverse diets and the research that's going into it more and more keeps coming out but mental health the difference between emotional health and mental health if there is one because i'd say that it's a big massive venn diagram in the overlap but there might be differences but mental health i'd say is more mental hygiene so what are you what processes are in place for your mental health such as big one screen time that diminishes mental health like massively without without a doubt kind of your routine your environment they're all key they may you may then feel the emotion but mentally where's your head at for the situation you're in and your mindset is more what comes into your mental health so yeah. how are you doing things because one man's one man's worst case scenario is an amazing opportunity for another and on the physical it'll be could be the exact same thing so mental is more mindset i'd say whereas emotional is more gut although they massively overlap there's no kind of everything's connected on some level. Everything is connected. So that's my answer, whether or not I can back that up with science. I don't know. But what do you think, Steph? No, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, yeah, because in the mind, mindset, you know, you you can develop an attitude. And I think yeah. there's um, some really, and obviously the subconscious brain, which I, I'm fascinated with and I'm going to yeah. study more about it yeah. in, in the coming months, which I'm really excited about. And I think we'll definitely regroup and, and talk more on another episode. Yeah. But yeah, like I feel like a lot of uh, our mind is, I think the subconscious brain actually contributes to maybe, I, it could be 70 or 80% of the way we think. So we might not realize that past trauma, um, old ways of thinking or things that have happened to us, you know, experiencing certain things that might, let's go negative, right? Bad experiences. They're in the back of our mind. And then when we're in a new experience, actually we're using the the memory of an old experience to deal with the new experience because there's signals there that remind you of the past. And that might not actually be a very good thing. So reprogramming that 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 mindset, the, the storage, almost like that computer storage in the back of the mind. Yeah, I, I feel that that's where the mental health can really benefit from. You know, working in that area of the the mind, the brain, right? Exactly. And then, like you said, with the emotional health, it's it's more the body, like with you know, that's like emotion, yeah, yeah, like, like yeah, yeah you, your arms, like all of a sudden, your back's hurting or your arms are itching and you're twitching and it's it's all a kind of physical it kind of connects emotional and physical like you said right you get stressed out and then you know that bad knee that you have starts kicking in and it's like well yeah, yeah there's something connected there right 100%, yeah everything's yeah. connected on some level in terms of so where did you say you're from sorry steph it's north london yeah yeah did you go to school in london yeah yeah i did so in primary school then can you remember any teachers names Oh yeah, um, Miss Maloney. What year was she in? She did year three. Okay. What? Why? Why did you remember her specifically? If you don't mind me asking. She was a cool teacher. We I liked her a lot. She was what very was studious, and um, 
there was this, oh gosh, now it's telling on my age. She had this book collection, right? That none mm-hmm. of the other teachers had. And she had this book collection. It was sick. It was Tim and the Hidden People. Wow. And I, I remember it now. I can't believe I've never said that in like 20 years. Tim and wow. the Hidden People. And she had like this book set. Like it was like a box set <laughs> of yeah. the Netflix of those days. Yeah. It was yeah. about 60 different little, like thin little books. And it was about this guy, Tim. And oh gosh, he'd either go into like the forest and there was these people, like they'd ch- change from trees to people and all kinds of stuff that he'd go on these adventures. She'd read us those stories. Story time was wicked yeah. with her. But she, mind. yeah, but she was really, uh, she was also quite, you know, because um, I was a Catholic school. So she took mm. the religious side of it quite seriously, but in a really yeah. like, not scary way, like in a really lovely way. My parents were very religious. So it kind oh. of worked for me. And um, I did my first Holy Communion in her class. So I think we, you know, she was quite maternal as well with us. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember her like out of everybody. Everyone thought Mrs. Maloney was like the cool one. Yeah, the cool one. I love it. Okay. So you just said they haven't thought about her or discussed her or even pondered on the idea of her for like over 20 years. And then you've remembered all this stuff coming back to her books, what she was like, what school was like. Yeah. Yeah, that's the subconscious mind. That that is the spotlight. So if you think of the two minds, conscious and sub, it's called subconscious, but that makes it sound like a, a sub footy player who isn't that good. It's if anything, it's more powerful and better to tap into. Yeah, so it's the non-conscious. It's something we're not aware of until it's brought to the surface. So there's studies, like you were saying, 70 80 percent. There's studies that's like up to ninety five percent. But either way, it's a large proportion of your day is spent in the subconscious mind. Yeah. Um, the habits, beliefs, behaviors we have. So, do you drive? No, well, I can drive, but I'm not driving okay. right now, and I don't want to get a car because I'm like, I'm not really going anywhere, am I? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's like for anyone listening at home, or whether you've done this yourself, when you've drove somewhere and you think, "How have I just got here?" That's your subconscious mind. You know, it, it knows how to drive. It knows the way yeah, to go. Yeah, it knows the route. Exactly. But your conscious mind, your conscious mind is like a spotlight, so it's like a torch. You can shine it on certain things. So you may have done today, Steph, oh, I need to email Jack about this. I need to prep this. I need to make sure I've made a cup of tea before the podcast, getting everything in order. Literally. The the subconscious is like a floodlight. So the spotlight's thinking of all these things, but the floodlight conscious takes everything in and it uses every nerve ending in your body, touch, sound, um, touch, sound, sight, every nerve end, taste to remember and store things. It's like, like you said, the computer, the hard drive. Yeah. So that that then stores things which we may or may or may not be aware of so there may have been experiences things etc which have shaped us and we don't even know they've shaped us until in a moment something triggers something in the subconscious which will then trigger an emotion whether that's positive or negative usually negative because that's when people know oh i need to work on this why do i feel this way yeah because subconscious it's like if do you like marmite do you know what i think i've only had it once I don't think I've ever had it, so because I don't have an answer to this question. Oh, but like people, you either love it or hate it, you mean? Yeah, I don't, have a, <laughs> but if there's, I don't know. Like, I don't know whether I've had it. Like, I can't, so I probably haven't. Because <laughs> yeah, I think I remember. Haven't. I yeah. think it's quite gross. I think I had it once, ages yeah. ago, because I kept seeing it on TV, and I was like, I need to try it. You should try it, yeah. But it's, it's like food you don't like, your mind will, as soon as you put it in your mouth, it sends a message right down into the subconscious, way, way down. Right, have I experienced this before? Yes or no? And if it has, was it positive or negative? Yes, yeah. it was positive. So you'll feel the positive emotions attached to this. But if you taste something and you have I had this before? No. Okay, does it taste like anything similar? This is in like you can't even process process how quick this is processing. But as yeah. soon as you your taste buds sense this taste, it'll just try and filter through stored experiences to then send information back to yourself. And that's where the emotions come in. Like, have you ever smelled something and it takes you way back to like being in like a family member's house when you was four? And you're like, yeah, oh, you mate, yeah, that and these really nice like baked things that yeah. like an old auntie used or to make. Oh them. gosh, yeah, <laughs> just like just something that like a sound and a song. Like, oh my god, this reminds me of when like you might have been at kind of music takes transcends. Like, music's the most transcendental thing there is, in my opinion. But that's the subconscious mind. 
having a stimulus, whether that's an experience, a noise, a taste, whatever it is. And then your mind is constantly processing this in the subconscious without you even knowing. Yeah. And then bringing those emotions to the surface, positive and negative. And if we don't have the tools in place or an emotional outlet, then they can become stagnant and blocked. And it's knowing, A, this is just an emotion, but B, how to how to allow it to flow and to allow it to pass and processing the emotions all emotions are valid and they all need processing but the majority of the time it will be subconsciously it will be processed on the subconscious level you know you've broken it down so well thank you jack and i hope that the you know the listeners um have found that really useful because i think it's a really a really simple but effective way that you described it and mm. i, I want to throw this one at you right the yeah. feeling of familiar familiarity. Gosh, I couldn't even say that. Familiarity. I won't even have a go. So, <laughs> so that, that feeling, right? If yeah. we go, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit deep on you. So if we go into the subconscious brain yeah. and there is um, a, a, um, a situation that, you know, you you when you were a kid, you'd always get bullied, right? Yeah. Let, let's take that one. You'd always get bullied. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, the bullying stopped and then, you know, it wasn't nice at the time, the bullying stopped and, but you got over it and you went, you know, time went by, but you never really maybe healed that. And there might've been some, um, feelings of like, you know, um, not being good Mm -hmm. enough, self-worth, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, But later on, you end up without realizing attracting people that are familiar Mm -hmm. into your environment. Um, and eventually as you get and so you attract them because there's something familiar about them right but you don't realize but you connect with them at the beginning and there's something that draws you to them and them to you and before you know it they're kind of almost bullied you again and so I'm, I'm I'm throwing that there because there's sometimes sometimes I think that's where the mind and the feeling you yeah. you know like you said you get that feeling of the past and whatever so you get drawn to something and it might be you might not realize that it's a good or bad thing to begin with but it's familiar and you're drawn yeah. to it but then yeah. you're also getting brought to be taught a lesson mm. because something has not been really addressed and it's in the subconscious brain yeah. does that make sense a complete sense yeah because if you're if you're thinking let, let's use this as an example so if you read a self-development book, you've, you've consciously taken that information in. Let's say you've yeah. read the seven highly, habits of highly effective people. If that's how you say, I don't know, I've never read it, but it's a big one that <laughs> you've read. If you read that book and put it down, you haven't changed your subconscious. You've changed your conscious mind. You're aware of this information, but have you embodied it? And is it part of your life? But if you, for 21 days or for three months, incorporate all of these habits before you know it, the part of your life that's in your subconscious, you know, you need to do these things. You're reprogramming your subconscious. Yeah. The, quick, the quickest way to do it is through hypnosis. It's, you can tap into the subconscious and reprogram it through hypnosis, hypnotherapy. But in terms of what you're saying there about attracting people, similar people from the, from a past situation and the situation repeating itself, that again can be from your subconscious because the brain, the, the mind just wants to stay alive. That's its prime drive. The human brain is survival. Like the primal brain is the most powerful part of the human mm-hmm. brain. That's why the emotions are so powerful. Back to yeah. driving. If you're ever driving, you might be the most loving, caring person on the planet. You might be, you might own a charity. You might, you might be amazing. But if someone cuts you up, I guarantee you, it takes a strong person not to start swearing and screaming at them. <laughs> yeah, road, yeah. Road, road rage. And that's because something comes into the mind surpasses all the normal compassion empathy understanding processing part and just triggers an emotion that makes you just go north to 100 full red steam blowing out your ears and that is because something has just triggered something in the primal in the animal brain and in terms of which is where emotions come from in terms of what you're saying there about the bullying situation subconsciously we we're living in a universe where you're out to be comfortable and to survive. And when you know what you're used to, better the devil you know than the devil you don't is a saying. So when <laughs> people when people know what they're used to, even though it's not ideal, you know how to process this negativity. So if you're not if you're out there looking at the universe from this mindset of this is either how people treat me or this is how maybe it's what you tell yourself, or this is how I deserve to be treated, or I always 
I always end up in situations like this. If you're affirming that to yourself daily, like, oh, I always have a bad partner or yeah. you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm always late or I always end up, I always end up cheating on my partner. Then guess what? They're probably going to happen because if you're telling <laughs> yourself something that much, it tends to be true because it's a belief you form and thoughts become beliefs, become actions, become reality. So through process, through changing the subconscious mind, you can program whatever it is you'd like in there into your subconscious at the root level of the thought, which then grows into a seed, into a flower and into the life that you desire and the life where you consciously create what the life you create, a life you have consciously created through your thoughts, because most people don't even know that there's a subconscious mind that they can change. Yeah. And back to the, just to finalize on the bullying situation, if you know, okay, I'm used to this and I know this thing or this always happens or I know how to approach situations like this. Your emotions, you're guiding yourself on your emotions. If you feel an emotion that's familiar, even if it's negative, the majority of humanity think, okay, I know how to deal with this. I know how to deal with the emotions. Yes, coping mechanism. Coping, coping, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Even though it's not what you want, you know how to process it. Yeah, and then and then that kind of without going down another like rabbit hole, but it we as this. human beings, right? We well, this is a deep chat. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. But we as humans, we want to have that kind of license of control. So so like, oh well, I know how to deal with this because I've done it a million times. I'll just do that, do that, do this, and it mm-hmm. might be quite negative, like you said. But yeah. there's the familiar, the familiar feeling, and I've done it before. I cope in this way, and a lot of us don't realize that we are we have embedded in our subconscious mind coping mechanisms from things that we have traumatically experienced or bad experiences from young exactly and that it's that phrase better the devil you know than the devil you don't that's why so that's why people as sad as it is people stay in relationships with physically abusive partners because they know that situation even though you know it's wrong I know, I know, oh, I know how to process this situation. I know how to live my life like this, which again, it's sad and it's heartbreaking because there may yeah. be kids involved, but it's still, even though these negative emotions are always on the surface, this is how resilient human beings are. We can adapt to the most negative situations. Yeah. That, and, that's it. and live in it and live our lives in those situations. But that mindset can be changed. Have you ever read? A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. No, I haven't. I need to add that to my reading list. You will love it. I'll send you a copy. If you message me your address, I'll send you a copy as a thank you for having me on. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jack. You're most welcome. There is a, um, it's a thin book and he was a psychotherapist and he ended up going to a concentration camp in the war. And his line in the book basically is, if you can't change the situation, you can change yourself. Because he said, even though he was in hell on earth, there was people in there who were having moments of joy and love and humor and compassion, just like normal people in normal life, because they chose to not be affected by what was on the outside. Internally, they knew they could choose their emotions and they know they could choose their viewpoints. And he said, he didn't think less of people in there who were broken by what was going on because the majority of people were, but he was fascinated from a psychologist's point of view. I thought, <laughs> why, why is there certain people in here who still feel happy and joy and they were giving each other the top off the back to wrap around the feet or sharing food. Why was there still that humanity there when everyone could be broken and living in this emotion of fear? And his line is, if you can't change the situation, change yourself. Wow, that is a massive gem. And, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about yeah. something, right? And this hooks in so well that, you know, you can't change a situation. It's also, you can't change the other person. So say like, yeah, exactly. you are in a situation or you're interacting with someone and they're actually maybe not being so nice or mm-hmm. they're being quite, you know, distant. They, they're basically behaving in a way that you, you wouldn't quite like and yeah. it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's being able to know that that's them and not you and not taking on that, exactly. that burden, right, that energy. Because I think sometimes, and a lot of the times, and I've, I've struggled, you know, but I've, I really feel like I'm, at a place where I can see it for what it is. And sometimes you've got you've got to get to know someone too, but y- you have to be able to know, okay, this is my energy. This is how I'm feeling. And then when you go into an environment, whether it's work or with family or friends, or you're talking to someone directly, 
if you notice that you're starting to feel uncomfortable and you're starting to feel a bit like, I don't know, a bit sad, a bit frustrated, disappointed, perhaps it's not actually you and it's the other person or the situation playing out. But I think a lot of us take that on and then we yeah. go and we put it in our backpack and then we go home and then we unpack the backpack and we're like, ah, do you know what I mean? And we don't well, realise that-, that it's not our <laughs> emotion. Exactly, but some people don't even unpack that backpack of a day. Some people just keep adding to it, and not processing. Oh. I've been there. I think I, I, we've all been there where we're not processing, and whether that's through that journaling, meditation, just a moment of reflection, a conversation with a friend, not processing these, rather than having a coping mechanism, have a coping process because life is life is tough, and whether you view that as negative or positive, life is a challenge always challenges are coming to us that doesn't mean it's not positive that doesn't mean it's hard the choice yeah. is what is your heart is your heart i'm going to constantly carry emotions and feel like this and feel way down or is it tough and your heart that you're choosing you know what i'm going to choose to do the work and process things daily weekly monthly in the moment and constantly process through them they're both hard they both they both carry just as much of a challenge but what would you rather what's more beneficial and what's going to help you heal from situations emotions yeah. that you don't really like or relationship whatever it is what's going to help you process what you've been through rather than holding on to it and becoming stagnant and blocked that's where reiki comes in handy because reiki can process the emotion reiki helps the emotions and the energy flow through your chakras and if an emotion isn't processed or if a, an event isn't processed or trauma or wh- whatever it is we do become stagnant and blocked in certain areas of our lives and as soon as that's processed, the energy can then begin to flow through you again. Yeah, I, I like the way you put that, because I was actually going to quote something out of, I don't know if you know Vex King. Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. I think he's great. Um, so, one of his, really. <laughs> so one of his books, Good Vibes, Good Life, which I think yeah. is a really good read. It's a really easy read. That's why I like what he's done. Yeah. He's made it so easy to just take these concepts and apply it into life, right, for yourself. But, number one bestseller for a reason isn't it yeah exactly the studying your emotions he says ignoring negative emotions is like keeping poison in your system learn to understand everything that you feel the aim isn't to force positive thoughts but to transform the negative ones into something healthier so you can feel better that's where more that's the positivity right there because you can't force a thought you can, it's how you, what you think on a thought. And I love that. I've never heard it so eloquently put. So I'm going to have to read that book now. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that. Because you can, if you think of your thoughts of a chain and you think of one positive thought, and then next thing you know, another positive thought will latch onto that through the law of attraction. Another positive thought will latch onto that. Before you know it, there's a whole chain of positive thoughts and you just, stream and positivity through your thoughts and then as a result through your emotions by getting on down to the level of processing the thought about the situation or the thought about a thought and i love that that was so eloquently put and Thank one more that. thing i have to say so it's connected to this but you said something earlier and i want to come back to processing negative thoughts but you said yeah. something very interesting around people being in relationships and staying there right because mm-hmm. they get accustomed to it and they they kind of just um it's almost like a resilience to just okay you know i can do this but deep down inside they're not happy yeah and i think it's really important to you know like i've heard so many times well i can't leave him or i can't leave her because i love them right yeah now <sighs> feelings are important to acknowledge and it's important to honor the feelings but what if it, you're in a situation where actually you're becoming stagnant with that person you know you're trying to grow and they're not growing at the same pace as you or at yeah. least in the same direction as you the love is not going to be enough that feeling of love is not going to be enough and if you keep holding on to that feeling of love it's almost turning it into a negative experience because it's drawing you out it's pulling you down and it's draining you so that's where I feel like you could have that positive feeling of, yeah, but there's love there. Okay. But what about taking the step back and going, I honor that I have these beautiful feelings for mm-hmm. this person. And those feelings are beautiful. They're wonderful. They're coming from a very positive place. But when I look at the circumstances of our dynamic now, we've outgrown each other, or this is not going in the direction of where we can cultivate more positive experiences. 
Yes. So now I need to find a way to remove myself from this, but in an honorable way. I think, and I, I, emotions can actually allow us to really be honorable to ourselves, but mm-hmm. also to others. You know, things don't have to end. And I, I, I did a bit of research on myself. You know, I'm also interested in my whole like soul's journey. But yeah. one of my one of my kind of trainings in my journey is my soul's journey is being mm-hmm. able to end you know because we're here and we're all on different soul contracts with each other no one's here like on a permanent basis with each other some are here for longer term some come and go right to teach us to learn and we we have those moments but how do you embrace that and know when it's time and also know to honor it like to feel that you can honor it in a positive way and release in a positive way i i think it's a big challenge out here that's the biggest challenge like it's to be able to process and release, I'd say personally, I think that's probably the what I constantly work on is processing and releasing, processing and releasing. Because at one point in my life, I did not process and I definitely did not release at one point. <laughs> and I coped. I thought I had releases and outlets, but I didn't. They were just coping and masking and the old brushing the dirt under the carpet. And then before you know it, it's a mountain of dirt. That was kind of my coping mechanism was... Uh, I wouldn't say it was toxic. It was definitely just for myself. It was, it wasn't self-love. I wasn't processing my emotions. There was no compassion there. It was just, oh my, this something had happened. I'd feel away. And then I'd be like, oh my God, why do I feel this way? And then I'd hate, I'd start self-loathing and self, self-hating. Yeah. Me, the feeling of type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then just getting caught into that cycle of beating up, beating up, beating up self just your negative self-talk really and beating yourself up mentally for feeling yeah. a certain way or acting a certain way. But then when you realise, hang on a minute, I am I'm in the driver's seat. Like I don't like this, but if there's something there or someone there saying, I don't like this, then let's get more in touch with that person who's saying they don't like this than the person who's acting a way you don't like, which is whether you call it your higher self, your soul, whatever that may be, whatever you believe. But if there's a version of you that recognizes and has awareness on a situation that you don't like, then it's becoming more in tune with that and becoming more tapped into your higher self and your soul. As long as your soul is on autopilot, as long as your soul is in the driver's seat and is driving and your ego isn't, and your ego isn't just on autopilot where you're living in the emotion and you're acting on ego, then the work is hard. Of course it is, but it's beautiful as well. (laughs) Yeah. When you know, like, okay, hmm, I didn't like the situation today about myself, but what can I do next time this come up? Doesn't that just sound a million times more attractive than you was a fucking idiot? To, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like yeah. my day earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're like, oh my God. Like, you could be the most soulful, vibe and high person ever one day, and then the next day, whether you had a bad sleep, who knows, but something might come your way, a situation, and... You don't act how you'd like to act. But then at the end of the day, when it's just you and your thoughts and you're thinking, can't believe I acted that way. Isn't it much more constructive and beneficial and step and constructive, beneficial and just positive to say, okay, I didn't like the situation or the way I handled this situation. What didn't I like? What did I like? What would I do better next time? That's your reflection. And then it's stepping out, stepping out the next day back into the universe and if that thing approaches you again or a similar situation, that's where the growth is. It's the same with meditation. When I meditate, when when you're feeling like your mind's scattered and there's loads of thoughts going on, I say to people, they're the best ones because you know your process. You know if your mind's overactive, you're, cl- you're clearing it out. You're letting yeah. it all process. It's coming to the surface. Yeah. And you might feel, you might do a 30-minute meditation and not feel bliss in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. It might be stress and you might come out of it like feeling, whoo, that was a journey. But then later that day or the next week, or when there may be a point when you notice growth and you've come to realize, oh my God, that's because I've actually processed this and you didn't even know you was doing it at the time. They're the best ones because I think you notice the growth at a later point because of the meditation yeah. you've done that day. It's really interesting you said that, right? Because I've been meditating for several years now. But mm-hmm. I think in the last year, particularly, I've mm-hmm. had moments, very powerful moments of meditation where feelings yeah. and emotions come through. 
Yeah. So I'm there meditating, doing my usual kind of, because I have a little sort of uh, sequence of how I get myself into it. And mm-hmm. now I uh, do the uh, headstand in yoga to just get the blood Ooh, to my wow. crown. And then yeah. I move into the meditation. I love it because I'm a bit zoned out, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. So it yeah. helps. It I really wouldn't... does. Yeah, yeah, so it really helps. I found that, you know, because I was dealing with something that day or the day before, which was conjuring a lot of my emotions it was to do with someone very close whether it was like a family member or a romantic partner or something like that or a close friend and it was quite a lot for me when I went to meditate I might have been calm at that point actually I think one of the situations was I was all right like the hours before I was all right went to meditate and as I got there the emotions just started surging so I'm meditating and I'm crying at the same time like oh, wow. literally and as I'm crying I'm thinking of the person or the situation and then yeah. I I sort of take that and that's it's it's really fascinating I'm really proud of myself of doing Ooh. this and being able to yeah. but I want to I'm sharing it because I want others to see that this is maybe something that that, that might come uh, useful to them but yeah. I then sort of thought about the person the situation and I know in my heart and soul I've got love for them so I started to honor that and then yeah. I started sending them love Then I cried more because of that. But then I was like, this is so beautiful. And in this emotion, like, because we might have had an argument that day, right? Like, let's say, or the day before. So I'm in this emotion and it's got me there and I'm embracing them and the connection and our relationship for the the goodness that it is. But I'm releasing the emotion that came from maybe the argument. Yeah. Oh, and then afterwards, I'd be like, woof. And then when I'm interacting with them, yeah, it was like, woof, just dusted off my shoulder. And then when I'm interacting with them the next time around, I'm just so much more peaceful. And then I noticed their Mm -hmm. reaction to me is like, oh, hey, Steph. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, we're cool. So I just, that's a big one that I think is a really cool concept of meditating and pulling out the emotions in that meditation. Literally, because if we don't process the emotions, they can become, they can eventually become your overriding emotion and you can live in the emotion if it's not processed. But when it's processed, if you don't, there's a saying, isn't there? If you don't heal what hurt you, you'll cut, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. So you see it a lot when people are angry to you and they may be having a bad day because something may have happened to them an hour or two ago and you never know what's going on, but someone yeah. may lash out at you. And if you've got that element of compassion and empathy, you understand like, okay, this person speaking to me like garbage is, this is a lot going on in their life because I haven't actually done anything. If you're, <laughs> yeah, able to, yeah. if you're able to see past that anger, emotion of anger and being taking it personally. But in terms of crying, again, back to the mindset, it's how you view it. Like if you're crying and it's releasing and you're feeling positive after it, that is a positive. It's not a negative to cry. All emotions are valid. Yeah. As long as you're aware of what the emotion's trying to tell you. And emotions are a physical manifestation of energy so crying sorry crying is a physical manifestation of an emotion which is just energy so when you cry you feel that emotion whether it's sadness it could even be happiness it could be relief when you're crying Mm. that your tears streaming is is something converting from energetic to physical and that's just one example when you come to cry you get a lump in your throat that's physical when you're anxious, you may get a knot in your stomach. The emotion is just energy, but the knot is the physical. Yeah. So imagine what other emotions you felt that have had physical manifestations in your body and haven't been processed. Like you, like you're saying, you can get chronic back pain from emotions. You can get oh yeah, the hips, hips, and all sorts yeah. because of emotions. Yeah. And I have clients for Reiki who like the first time they get Reiki, they start laughing. And they say, oh, I don't know why I'm laughing. Or like, even like, I've had clients who's like, it's the 10th time of Reiki and they might burst out into a fit of laughter. And like, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So that's how I know it's not just first time nerves because it's people experienced having Reiki. And that is just an emotion showing itself. It's just laughter. Where's it come from? I don't know, but it's an emotion. It needs to pass clearly. So whether you start crying, you're emotional, you laugh there, all these emotions, they're all valid. They're all beautiful. They're all amazing and there to tell you something about yourself or your situation and there to be felt in all of the glory and eventually let to pass because they will you can't ever not feel emotions that's 
if you weren't to feel emotions, that's like stopping the thinking. They're always going to be there. It's knowing how to process and what is this trying to, what is this emotion trying to tell me? Once you've identified it, once you're self-aware and you okay, okay, I'm feeling this emotion. Okay, what is this emotion telling me? Okay, what do I actually need to do in life now? What physical action do I need to take? And that's where you can manage your levels of emotions through, like we, like you've just said there, processing, whether it's through meditation, journaling, a conversation, whatever your aim, whatever your process is, really. You know, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm aligned with everything you're saying, and I'm <laughs> and do you know what's so funny is like um. So everyone's in this, I want to be positive, live a positive life. And mm-hmm. I think since in the last year, everyone's really trying to go that way, right? Yeah. And that's brilliant. I think sometimes, though, the mind can get in the way. So hear me out here. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be positive and you want to keep that positive mindset, but you might be feeling some negative emotions, right? You might be feeling a bit depressed or sad or something's happened that you you say to yourself your mind intellectually is like no I'm fine and you know and someone asks you oh what Steph are you all all right today but I'm actually feeling shit no 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 I'm I'm fine like I'm good yeah I'm good and you're fronting it like that is actually quite a bad streak to go down right because it it starts to build up and your your mind is almost like putting this barrier to your Mm. heart because I feel like the emotions come from our heart space personally, rather than the mind. So I feel like that, that that's where this like big barrier just comes up between the mind and the heart. I don't know what you feel about that. Yeah, it's no, I, I agree because when you know something isn't right and you try and cover it up, same with the relationships as we touched on earlier, there becomes a conflict then of, I want to say this. I want to live my life this way. I want to act this way. However, I think it's best if I act this way. For example, you know, I might be having the worst day. No, I'm fine. First of all, that can then develop into a coping mechanism where you realize, actually, I can lie to people here about my negative emotions. And, no <laughs> one knows. and then that can become toxic and self, self-defeating self because the mind realizes, oh my God, I can actually just say I'm okay and no one, no one needs to know that I'm not. Yeah. And then you can live in that then. I'm okay, but you're actually not. But if you actually say, are you okay? In a safe, to someone in a safe space, Steph, are you okay? And you go, you know what? I'm not having a bit of a shit time. I've got this going on personally. I've got this going on, this going on. And yet, I know this won't be forever. Yeah. By reframing. I speak to all my clients about reframing a situation. Because when you're in a situation, it's quite hard to see if for what it is. But when you zoom out and you're able to, see things which we've all got them situations where you go oh in hindsight I had to actually lose that job or that relationship or this situation had to happen for me to get here which I now enjoy so much Mm -hmm. that's all well and good in hindsight but when you're in the moment of something and it feels doesn't feel too good it's hard to zoom out and it's hard to get that perspective when you're in something it always feels like the worst thing in the world but if you can reframe a situation by putting a spin on it Or you can try and change what you can try and change your viewpoint, which could be like, okay, what else does this mean? What else could have, why else has this person swore at me in work today? Or why else am I feeling this way? You can reframe it and put a positive spin on it. And even saying, and yet, like, I feel like absolute crap today. And yet, I suppose I didn't feel like this yesterday. And I, I felt like this before and I always seem to bounce back and feel better you reprogram in your mind by putting this these positive spins on the emotions we're feeling and the thoughts we're having yeah so there's a there's another one I want to share with you so a while back it's about five years ago we did this court so it was at work and it was a corporate leadership training piece but it was about how to deal with conflict both verbally and through like email you know challenging situations at work with colleagues and you know and one of the the areas that they helped us on was around how best to construct some kind of communication, especially in email, because we what we realized is we were a leadership team in different parts of the world or Europe, and yep. we hardly saw each other and we didn't always have time to get on the phone. So if there was something going on with, say, my team versus another team or work wasn't getting delivered right, you know, stuff happens, right? 
that you do need to talk it through, but you don't always have time to talk it through or understand the other yeah. person's situation or what's going on in that team. So you drop an email, you know, everyone's sending the bloody email, right? And mm-hmm. what we realize is that, you know, the emails kind of lacked the sense of feeling. So we were told to use the I, you know, this has happened. So for example, um, the project X was not delivered on time as planned. Mm-hmm. I feel that we could have avoided this, you know, from happening. These are my thoughts, you know, but framing, framing rather than saying, okay, this project wasn't delivered on time. It was this and this and this, like blaming, you know, starting to point the blame and going down that route rather than sort of taking it onto yourself and saying, this is how I feel about this situation at work. Yeah. And and can we find a resolution or how do we get to a better place? How do you feel about, when we didn't deliver that project on time. Do you see what I mean? Yes, that's I, it. I think it's so powerful. I, I, from that point, I, I use the, word, the words I feel so much. And even when I write an email, sometimes I stop and I go, well, that seems a bit informal. But then I'm like, no, 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 this is authentic. Keep yeah. going, keep going. Exactly. Now, on that point, you know, if you're saying to someone like, oh, if, you know, say like you turned up late, to this podcast like really late like an hour and I'm there on I'm there waiting going and I'm phoning you and everything you haven't still haven't picked up my phone yeah. and then you you you, you, you they, oh hey Steph like sorry I'm a bit late then I'm like oh you're not a bit late you're an hour late I <laughs> you know I feel that that was really unfair and you know I feel, feel I feel let down and I feel, now if you were to say and I know you wouldn't Jack but say like you were to say well no you can't feel like that because I was running late now that's wrong, right? Because you can't invalidate my feelings. Not at all. And I, I'm, I'm just giving that example because I, I want our listeners to understand that when we choose to express ourselves by saying "I feel" and you express it, be very attentive to the person you're sharing that with. Yeah. Because if they embrace that and they go, "Oh, okay," like Steph, thank you. Like, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Like, um. Let, let me work on that you know or I, mm. I, I'm going to take that on board for next time and um, how can I be there for you or how can we make this better versus I don't care or you know kind of submitting your invalidating your feelings be aware of that because you might find that there's something going on in that situation or with that person where they struggle I'm going deep now they struggle to embrace <laughs> how they feel and they they struggle to show up in the world with a conscious awareness of their own feelings Mm, absolutely and it's effective communication as well because if you is a little a little gem for the listeners here for anyone who may be struggling with communication maybe to the partner a colleague a friend a family member if you say to someone you made me feel this way straight away their ego starts ringing well I haven't made you feel that way. It's you. You did, and then an argument can come about. Yeah. Because you've done this. You've made me feel this way. You, you leaving the toilet seat up makes me angry. Whatever it is, <laughs> it could be a far more extreme than that. But if you start putting you, 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 you've made me feel this way. You, the ego straight away is trying to protect. Our, all of our egos are trying to protect us and keep us alive. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the ego feels threatened. The, the, that other person will then be like it's not me it's you it's the way you feel you're too sensitive but yeah. if you start off, exactly but if what's amazing what you've touched on there is if we approach it of okay i just feel like sometimes this is this x y and z happens i just feel like sometimes you, i just feel like sometimes i'm not heard or if you put the onus on ourselves i feel yes. like sometimes I'm let down or I feel like sometimes I'm not heard or like I feel like sometimes I'm not a priority if you say that to someone I feel like sometimes I'm not a priority rather than you don't spend enough time with me that's the same thing but it's the approach of I feel like because if someone does actually care about you and you tell them how you feel and it's not positive the way you're feeling if they genuinely care about you they'll start to change the behavior or their approach towards you if they genuinely care about you, which happens the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. It's just like you're saying there, most people, they've got their own stuff going on and they're trying to process, they've got their map of the world, which is good what you've mentioned about being late, Steph, because I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not late 
to a lot of things. <laughs> you were late today, though. <laughs> yeah, well, and ap- apologies about that. But I always say, I always say, if I am like, thank you so much for your understanding and thank you for thank you for your patience because my map of the world is if a client's late for me because I know sometimes things happen. I, it doesn't really that doesn't upset me that much, but I know for certain people i've got a friend who like if you're ever late even five minutes for a social event it ruins his day and in, my mind, in my mind in the world i'm like well it, i'm only five minutes late but to him it's important so sometimes things happen and i always apologize and i always personally say okay thank you for your patience and i do like to think you can find a common ground when things don't go your own way because we're living on one planet with seven or is it maybe even eight billion worlds we all have our own view of the world Mm-hmm. And that late, that late thing we've st- spoke about, that's just one way of looking at things. But there may be an approach to emotions or there may be an approach to living together. Like if you've ever lived with someone who's had a different upbringing to you, they might think it's perfectly okay to just leave the dishes in the sink. But to, <laughs> you, to you, that's the worst thing in the world. Or that oh, you, may yeah. think, you may think it's okay to just like go to bed without turning the telly off or the light off. But to them, that might be the worst thing in the world. And it's that having that empathy and compassion and understanding on both sides to yeah. understand each other's emotions towards something as well, which is basically what you've just discussed perfectly in through the working environment. I feel this way. That allows other people to register and recognize, okay, I don't like that they've said they feel this way. What can I do to change that? Yeah, rather, rather than, than making... Blaming them. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard because I think as you were talking, I was thinking, oh, I think I said something about you did this, you did that the other day. So it's hard to get into that because when you're in the moment of emotion or you're feeling like, oh, you're feeling disappointed, you end up, you know, kind of going off on one. That's why, you know, one of the other things I'd like to say to the listeners is that if you're in a heated moment, just try to take a step back and process Mm -hmm. how you're feeling because yeah. It's easy to just pick up the phone and start texting away and just cussing off and all kinds of stuff. And I've done it. I think I've done it a lot recently as well in some instances. But, you know, because you want to be heard or you're just really frustrated and you just let it rip. But actually, if you took a step back and you felt how you really feel and what it is inside you and you reframed that, it, yeah. the delivery to the other person, you may actually get them to really understand where you're coming from rather than it being... Mm-hmm just a bit of a, a slagging match and a, and a who can win or who can hurt each other more let's let's if you're having a debate or a conversation or an argument if you're having that with someone in life partner friend family as long as the point is to get to common ground or who can shout the loudest or who can win then these healthy debates and these healthy arguments can be healthy because you can process things mm-hmm. and the often as long as it's constructive they're often more healthy than staying silent in fact always because she who stays silent to prevent a conflict she'll start a war within herself because you go away thinking i wish i said that yeah or, i didn't say that you never i, I never speak up and then you don't <laughs> say something because you think i can't be bothered with a conflict and then you go away for the rest of the day and you're arguing with yourself all day so, <laughs> i'm i'm on the other side of that jack i'm like conflict bring it on <laughs> yes that's what I'm, exactly but if you if your reason for not saying something is because you don't really want a conflict either way there's going to be a conflict in yourself because you're going to wish you're going to wish you have said it at the time but it's how you approach it which is what you've just put beautifully is i feel this way yeah and no decent kind compassionate human being will invalidate your emotions yeah and you know way. what <laughs> this is the next point i want to bring up how powerful would it have been for us to be learning this kind of concept in terms of understanding our emotions and how we communicate them in in our interactions with people, whether work, family, friends, you know, school. If we had learned this from young at school, if this was actually, you know, in the curriculum. You don't, you're, you're actually you're technically unlearning at school because emotional <laughs> intelligence, emotionally, no, really, like emotional intelligence is innate everyone is emotionally intelligent it's only when we grow up in in a society where separation like we all live in like in certain cultures in the world all families live together and they're all in tune with each other's emotions but in the west especially all rooms are separate all houses are separate people live miles away from the nearest relative but Mm -hmm. through school through school you're not 
you, IQ is just a measure of intelligence, isn't it? It's, it was yeah. a test developed, I think, after the war or for during the, the World, War, World War II for how intelligent are you rather than emotional intelligence, which yeah. is just as, if not more important. Because if you look at kids, when like, when a kid, if there's two toddlers, I don't know whether there's any kids in your family at all, but when my cousins were younger, if one of them would bang your head, the other one would touch his own head and go, ouch. And like, it wasn't yeah. that, it, it wasn't him who'd hit his head. Kids are so in tune with emotions and we were all kids at one point. Yeah. And we grow up in a world where with your emotions are seem to be suppressed and your emotions don't matter. And it's intelligence that matters. It's the thinking, living in the, living in the alpha state of mind or the beta state of mind where we're constantly thinking and problem solving and your emotions don't matter. Mm-hmm. But when we, when we, as we grow older and become more conscious and aware, we come to realize these things are actually pretty powerful, if not more beneficial to my life. If I can become in tune with them, if I can become at one with my emotions and feeling them and flowing with them, because your emotions can be used as a guidance system as to what feels good, what doesn't feel so good. Okay, this experience doesn't feel so good. I won't pick that again. I'll pick this. Yeah. Which feels good. Being in tune with your emotions allows you to manifest and create the life you literally want because oh. you're aware of what feels good. That just, you know, that just sparked something in my mind about Abraham Hicks because Esther and Jerry, yeah. they talk yeah. a lot about your emotional guidance yeah. system, right? Literally, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Because your emotions, on that's on the spiritual level, yeah, you, you can guide through life of, I like, this exp- and they talk about contrast and experiences as well. So, like when you feel something that doesn't feel too good, that's not you off your path. You're just aware of, okay, I don't like this thing. I'm not going to experience that. I'm going to try and avoid that. And kids do that. Kids will always pick and choose what feels good. And they know if something doesn't feel too good or they don't like an experience, they won't go that way. They'll go for what yeah. feels good. And we grow up through school and through experiences and through society believing that your emotions are valid like how how many thankfully i wasn't told this as a child but i know a lot of males who were told as a boy stop crying you girl. oh yeah don't only girls cry like says who <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but, do and only some, girls cry? and in some cultures it didn't matter if you're a girl or a boy especially like i'll just say asian and african kind of cultures because yeah. i had friends It'd be like, what are you crying for? Do you want me to give you a do you want me to give you a reason to cry? A reason to cry, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know that was it didn't matter if you was a girl or a boy, you would kind of get yeah. punished for crying. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's what it would be powerful if we were not if we would I don't even think you could teach in school. I just think if it was harnessed, because yeah. obviously it, it takes a lot of work and you can do it on the personal level. Like I was very personally my family was very emotionally in touch because we had trauma quite young for like a loss. So like my mum would always ask us, how do you feel? You feel okay? Like that was her priority. How do oh, you feel? Wow. Yeah. We were always kind of talking about how we feel, which I only come to realize later in life. It's quite unusual for families to always talk about how they feel. Well, I never had that. Never yeah. had the, how do you feel? Of, so yeah. And, and at the time I used to think this is annoying. All we do is talk about how we feel. But <laughs> now I'm grateful for it because the the outcome of a big massive loss in the family was all being in touch with each other's emotions to know that even if you're not speaking up, you might even though you're not saying you feel bad, you may still feel bad inside. And that's the power of discussing your emotions and being emotionally intelligent and being mm-hmm. aware of when someone doesn't feel too good, knowing, okay, I can tell they don't feel this way. That's fine. It'll pass. How can I help you? through this time rather than making you feel happy again and making you laugh it's okay are you feeling like crap i'll sit in it with you i'll be emotional with you that's emotional intelligence kids will do that as well kids will just put their arm around them make crying until they're happy again and and then they carry on playing with them kids are so emotionally intelligent you know and the thing is is that we're not too far from the kids because we have our inner child so if we really connect with our inner child it's in us it's innate in all of us right still in our adult life exactly it's something we can all become disconnected from our inner child but healing your inner child if you need to heal it connecting to your inner child which may have been the more positive fun and upbeat version of you if you can connect to your inner child which is within all of us your life is like 
but there's that saying, isn't there? You don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. And it's so true. Like there's yeah. 80 year old, there's 80 year old men who still feel eight at heart because they just having fun in life. Yeah. And they're in touch with their emotions. And yeah. in my opinion, emotional intelligence. At the, and again, I don't know if I can back this up with science. So if there's a scientist out there who wants to debate me, we'll do it on the next episode of this podcast. But <laughs> I don't know if I can back this up with science, but emotional intelligence the humanity and on a personal level is far more important than in um, IQ, just intelligence, yeah. intellect, personally, I feel. Would you agree? No, I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree. Because with the IQ and learning and reading books and kind of going with theory, anyone can do that, right? Mm-hmm. There's kind of just training your brain, mm-hmm. but really being able to feel what is in within you and connect mm-hmm. From your heart space to, you know, like you said, the gut, the heart, the mind, being able to understand the the different areas of of what drives you, uh, primal, core, conscious brain, subconscious brain, how you feel, how that connects to your physical. This is, it's actually just just learning about yourself and learning how you work, right? Yeah, know thyself. Yeah. It brings it back full circle to how we opened the podcast was, yeah, I think therefore I am. That that may be. I think I'm conscious. I have human consciousness. I can think, why am I here? Or why do I act this way? Or we're able to do that. But also, I feel therefore I am. So the the IQ side is, I think I can create, therefore I am. That's intelligence. Mm-hmm. But also emotional intelligence. I feel this way. Therefore, I am a human being. I am able to connect and be intimate with a human being on an emotional level. And share a moment of appreciation or joy or gratitude with another it could be a random member of society you may both just have this moment of sheer joy together which is just love and it's an emotion of it's a positive emotion that because you're in touch with your emotions and you allow all your emotions to be felt fully in all of the glory or not so glorious if you view it as a negative emotion Mm -hmm. feeling into these emotions is where life is because you don't remember a memory of being on a beach somewhere in Barbados you remember how you felt when you was on the beach yes you don't, you don't remember when you seen your favorite band live you don't remember how amazing the lights were and it looked so good you remember how you felt when they played your favorite song yeah and that power of emotions I feel therefore I am life is emotion Wow, 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 wow. So, Jack, before we wrap up this amazing episode, I want... To you, by the way, because I have <laughs> I've just been in flow. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. This has been wicked. We could go on forever. But I, I, just, I think we've got more to talk about and um, definitely, yeah. definitely do more. And I'm, I'm really thankful to have you on, on the first episode of the new Series yes. 3. I, yeah. I just wanted you to drop some more gems on us before we wrap up. Yeah. What would you consider, our, you know, go to tips, best practice, you know, things that you would advise our listeners to becoming, you know, um, an emotionally healthy person? Self-awareness. Definitely become self-aware, reflect, journal, meditate, speak to someone, a safe, a safe space, have a safe space where you can ask, what do you think about this? With someone who's got your best interests at heart. And definitely be, start to re- register and recognize what emotions are coming up mm-hmm. frequently. And again, start to work on these beliefs we have and tap into the subconscious and start to process things on a level of deep understanding and reflection. But then also leave leave things where they are sometimes. Once it's out, once you've journaled, once you've had that brain drain and you've reflected, just close the book and think that is that situation's done with until something similar creeps up maybe in future because Mm -hmm. otherwise and you'll definitely see this yourself i think everyone listening will be aware of this you come into contact with people who live in emotion energetically they just they're a big ball of chaos because their emotions are they're living in an emotion of stress panic worry anxiety because they haven't been processed and they haven't been like that meme you said of the guy with a hole in his stomach and everything's just flowing through him and he's not he's feeling everything but he's not attached to everything he's not identifying with them yeah but that the tip the big tip which i use with all my clients is do not identify with the emotion rather than saying i am anxious or i am upset or i am just say i am feeling the emotion of 
And even that one tip, just changing, I am feeling the emotion of whatever it is that you've recognized, that will start to change your subconscious. Wow, that was beautiful. Jack, you are inspirational. You are. You are a light worker. You are. Oh, thank you so much. Steph, no, thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for your patience. I know I was a little bit late. Thank you very much. No, you weren't late. That's why I didn't. I didn't give that example of you being late because you were late. You weren't late. Okay, well, we rearranged anyway from so forgiven, <laughs> even if you weren't in trouble. But anyway, <laughs> oh no, I wasn't late, I was just singing as soon as I come on to record, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, yeah, that music yeah. actually could be quite. I thought we could have used that music, but maybe copyright we yeah. can't. But Jack had some really cool music on, and I was like, Where is he? Is he in like some like in secret lockdown party or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll send you that tune, I'll send you the album, yes, but, um, please. Thank no Steph, honestly. Thank you for having me. Since you first messaged me and we connected, I was thinking, I'm so excited for this. And I'm glad it took a little bit longer than when you first messaged me to say, Oh, let's do it next week. Because there's been like I've been excited for this for so long and I've been speaking to people about it. And it's got me kind of it's better than I ever would have imagined. And honestly, congratulations to you on the success of it so far. Well, keep going because even though it's already amazing it's going places and you are a natural for this type of work stuff it's amazing so thank you for having me on I'm honored truly honored oh Jack I'm I'm really touched by everything you say in my soul in my heart and soul those words were beautiful I am looking forward to coming on your podcast I feel that you know we are on this movement we're all Mm. connected and we're all doing this great inspirational light work to help one another and help our communities and, you know, save the planet, you know. We're all connected. Yeah. yeah. Humanity has a massive opportunity to rise up and I feel yeah. that we are a part of that. So it's it's really beautiful. That's something that money cannot buy. No, it cannot. Absolutely not. So before we close, I'm going to end on a really cool quote that um, you have, you um, you've co-signed. But I wanted to let everyone know where they can find you. So where's your socials at? Can you give us a, a bit of a rundown? Yeah, of course. So you can find me personally. My main platform is Instagram. Is that yours as well, Steph? You yeah, anything? Divine Feminines with a Z. Yes, edgy. You zig where all the people zag. I love it. <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram at the Epiphany Coach. And my, you can find me on my website. The link will be in the bio. But if you want to just go straight to my website, it's www.theepiphanycoach.co.uk. Or if you wanted to email me, if that's your preference, if you don't have social media, or if you're a business and you want me to like maybe to do a corporate talk or deliver a group to a business organization, you can, every, all this will be on my website, but you can contact me through email. And it's simply jack at theepiphanycoach.co.uk. And that's, that's all three really yeah so Steph again thank you so much I'm I'm feeling amazing now like I've got so much energy because of this conversation so thank you thank you so much too I've been I've been personally inspired there's some gems there that just really got me feeling it so likewise from you thank you Steph honestly I'm grateful very very grateful have an amazing evening thank you so I'm gonna end guys on this quote and before i do i want to thank all of the soul tribe for being with us on this journey we may have some new listeners so we hope that you enjoyed it and for the existing listeners we hope that you're enjoying the journey so far emotional pain cannot kill you but running from it can allow embrace let yourself feel let yourself heal Bye, everyone. Lots of love and light. See you soon.